I'm Pooh Jetter, a player development coach for the Portland Trailblazers, assistant GM of the Rip City Remix. What can participants expect at the open trial? I would just tell them, like, share the ball. You know, you got to be able to pass, move, uh, make sure you cut, make sure you're being vocal. And, and most importantly, like, have fun. You know, compete. You know, so my advice would definitely be just to, you know, showcase your strengths, you know, and, and do, what, do what got you there, you know, so. Because uh, a lot of people may get into a situation and be a, a player that we don't even, that they don't even know, who, like, who they are, you know, so. Uh, but have fun and be ready to compete and play some defense. How do you think it feels to see new talents and fresh blood on the courts that you not only played on 10, 15 years ago at this point, well, the UP here, but mm -hmm. how does it feel to see the potential of what could grow on the home court advantage or basically the home courts that you have found? All right. Uh, by me being one of those players, you know, like, you know, just to be able to say, like, I was able to play these 17 years. Like I said, I, I came into a situation like people didn't really even know who I was. You know, as in coming to college, I only had like three, four offers, you know, and uh, the one, the thing I love is I never stopped believing in myself and never stopped working, you know, um, and being prayed up. Like I'm a spiritual person, you know, so um, that was one of the main things that by me being able to play these type like this type of 17 years like it's because of my belief in myself and in God right so um but you know having that experience of just you know working hard you know but listening and by listening I was able to show through my actions that I understand what you, what needs to be done right so uh when it comes to that type of development you know that people just got to you know, work. I think I read it before. Like, like success is the only place in the in the dictionary that comes before work, right? Like people just want it, but it's like okay, like let's work to get it though, the right way. You know, so that's what we're here for to be able to coach, um, to make sure that you know that they are developed in like the right way to be successful in life. In your words. What stands out about G League? Uh, the G League is the like I feel like it's opportunity, right? Like the low the model. I don't even know if the model is still the same now. Like the dream starts here. Like that's what the G League is about. It's not like I said. It's not just for players. It's for everybody that's part of it. You know, when I was talking to general managers before, like they were pumped up and excited that they was able to start in the G League. You know, and because that's the type of reps that you need, you know, for the opportunity, you know. So there's a lot of GMs that were the GMs of the G League teams that are now uh, general managers of the NBA team, you know. So they were able to, you know, make some mistakes and, and learn and have that experience. And that's what it's all about is that experience part. So uh, when that when I said the, the dream starts here, like, it really does. And it's like for even players, like the G League helps you because everybody's paying attention to it. And you never know who's watching. You never know. It's that international team. Like it's that NBA team. Like so if you really want to be this pro player, you know, you just got to, you know, do your job because somebody's watching at all times. Like the G League is everything, you know, so you just got to be. Be ready for the opportunity. So, I love the G League, man. Like the G, what the what the G League did for me, you know, when I started and when I finished. Like, like I thank God for this. Circling back around, how does it feel to be back at UP in general? Woo, man! Bro. Like when I tell people, you know, um, I never like when I signed. When people found out, like that I was, you know, with the Trailblazers and now with the Rip City Remix. The community in Portland was like, welcome back. Like, you back home. And it's very true. Like, I spent four years here, 
you know, and that's at a key age of 18 to 22. Like, I really matured here. Um, I had a church home, you know, like, like I was definitely involved in the community. And it's amazing people, you know, that I, not just, I, they're not my friends, they're my family, you know, so um, I'm excited. I'm excited to even, like, bring my, you know, my wife is coming with me and my two kids, you know, and um, I can't wait to, for them to come see the campus, you know, being at UP and, and um and seeing like the cove, you know, is it still is it still called the cove? Like I hope it's still called the cove, and I hope I, yeah I heard the the oh, comments. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the P. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, like even with the comments, like the comments when I was at school wasn't wasn't you know what it is now, you know, and that whole <laughs> that whole school changed. That whole school is different. No more Howard Hall. Like now it's like. A whole new world, you know. But you know, being back at UP and just being back in Portland, period. Like, I'm excited. I'm excited, and I can't wait to do great things for the community. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Come on. The can they see the this? Ah, can you see this? This is it. Pilots for life. Now that I'm back in Portland, you know what they about to do. They're about to retire my jersey. I can't, I can't wait. They always told me they were like, "Well, we can't retire your jersey until you, you know, until you were retired uh, from basketball." And I'm like, "It's no excuse now." Well, I'm, I'm in Portland, so uh, so now, like, you know, we're gonna be able to do some amazing things. So, how does being back at UP tie back into how it feels to be back in Greater Portland? Well, I, I look at it all as as one. Really, you know, like being back in Portland is, is that means everything to me. You know, um, like I said, I'm familiar with it. You know, and that was one of the main things why I wanted to take this opportunity. You know, I was able to transition from basketball straight into coaching in front office, right? And one of the main reasons is why, like when Portland reached out, I said, of course, because I know people. I, I love relationships. I love networking. Um, so just being back in Portland and like even being even more closer to to UP and on a bluff, like uh, we're gonna be able to do some special things together, you know. And like I said, I'm a messenger and servant, so whatever I, whatever, whenever I'm needed, like like use me, you know, so we could continue to do some some powerful things and and change people's lives. Oh, my bad. Having experienced Portland in a different context than your time in the Blazers, you know, a lot has changed when it comes to the team, a lot has changed when it comes to Portland, and by all means, a lot has changed at UP as well. In the context of the time of the Blazers, how has your perspective on the city evolved as far as basketball culture? Well, like, that's the beauty of me, like, you know, being in Portland since I was 18, right? Um, the basketball culture, like not just with the Trailblazers, but in the city, is is everything. Like people in Portland love basketball, and Portland being the only really pro team. I know we have the Timbers, right? But you know that Trailblazer uh, mentality is everything. You know, uh, you, when I was here, you know Damon Stoudemire was here, and that's like one of my like mentors. You know, and Ime Udoka and you know, my teammate is Ben Sullivan, you know, who's now with Ime with the Rockets, who's won the championship with the Milwaukee Bucks. Then you have your Aaron Miles. So, like I said, like I was, I'm, I'm deep in the community, especially in this basketball community, right? And, you know, having great trainers like Bino and, you know, and uh, rest in peace, Aaron Cowan, you know. So, you know, this, the, this basketball community is everything. You know, from Kane and Chapman to Kendrick. You know, like I could name so many people that's that's helping Portland be who it is. You know, and you know, I'm just happy to be back to be able to add more, you know, flavor to the to the to the sauce. You know, so you know, like I said, Portland when it comes to basketball, like it's real serious. And like I said, I'm just happy to be a part of it again. What unique 
insights have you gained? Like, what's the feeling that you get when you walk along the streets and you see people in jerseys, or you see people in blazers colors, or you see the shoes, and you see people even just on the court during pickup games? Yeah. Whether they're repping the blazers more directly, or whether they are people in Portland that just have this appreciation for basketball culture, whether it's external or more internal. Um, I could really only, because I haven't like really been in a city like that. Um, like I could just give you my experience when it came to NBA Summer League. Like at NBA Summer League, like it was fans there, you know, like supporting with jerseys, and this is in Vegas, right? Like they hats. Uh, jerseys, everybody screaming out, you know, shade it, and you know, screaming out Scoot name, of course, and um, and Chris Murray, and you know, and just it was that that feeling, you know, um, and it was great to see Anthony and Nas and and the players there as well. So, you know, I, I can't wait to see, you know, during the season what it's about to be like, you know, um, but definitely when I was at University of Portland, like, you know, those are the times when the Blazers was, of course. Winning and you know doing some doing some great things and I was able to like I said, be mentored by you know Damon Stoudemire you know so uh, I can't wait to see you know you know the community you know embrace you know not just the Trailblazers but the remix. And just kind of a final question: When it comes to the remix more specifically, what does culture mean to not just how you envision the remix going on the court, but also in the community itself. What would you ultimately like to see culture mean? All right. When it comes to the remix, like we have to be in the community. You know, we have to be able to, you know, make it feel like it's real organic with the trailblazers. Right? So, you know, uh, like I said, this is where the dream starts, you know, but you know, for in order for the dream to start here, we have to be able to, you know, make sure that th these young men and women that's out the city knows what that dream is about, right? Because hopefully people that are seeing and watching us, of course, may be like, I want to play there, you know? And so hopefully this will be inspirational, you know, motivational, you know, for you to, you know, accomplish your dreams, right? So. When it comes to the remix and when it comes to the trailblazers, like we want to do some great things like in the community, right? Together, you know. So if that's at the YMCA's or if that's in Gresham or if that's you know in Beaverton, like we want to make sure that we really uh, share what that that family means. Like if we're gonna say family, let's like really, you know, believe in it, you know, and make sure that it like like I said that dream comes true. So.